So can you tell me what was it that first excited you about the expedition? What made you apply? Antarctica is one of the things that is critical to geography. It's critical to um, climate, it's critical to ocean circulation. It's one of the things that if you're a geographer you're probably interested in. And it was things like Antarctica and amazement about places that drove me to come back to geography. And now back into geography to have the opportunity to go and visit somewhere like that, there was no way I was going to turn down the chance to do that. And, and how much did you already know about the original Fuchs expedition? Very little. There was uh, some severe swatting for the selection centre, which was held up in the Lake District over three days. Um, it involved lots of stuff that was nothing to do with interviews. It involved sleep deprivation exercises, search and rescue missions, but there was also a number of interviews and certainly reading up on the Fuchs expedition was part of my preparation for that. Okay. Can you tell us about your own personal project for the expedition? Sure. Um, I'm doing a project that's on human adaptation to cold. I'm looking to see the effect that clothing, diet, a person's body fat um, and a person's metabolism and fitness make to how they cope with the cold. We're going to do a series of tests including cold water immersion tests, fitness tests, altitude tests and in fact psychological tests before we go. We will then do a series of simple tests when we're out on the ice and then we'll repeat the series of tests that we did before we went to see if we're better adapted. And by putting different members of the team on different diets, getting them to wear different clothing and obviously the team has different starting body fat percentages, different metabolisms and different fitnesses, we'll be able to see what had the most impact. So how are you using what you learn during your training in your classroom teaching? One of the main things we're learning at the moment is camp craft. Um, what to do with your tent, how to get it up within that 15 minute window that's going to mean you don't die from cold. You've got probably 15 minutes if the winds close in to get the tent up, get the stove on and get your brew on really. Um, we're doing an awful lot of camp craft. I work with the Duke of Edinburgh team with the Knoxted School, it's a very active part of the school and so I'm able to offer some real insights and different ways of thinking um, about simple things like map work, about camp craft and all that side of things. The real bonus will be when we get beyond the expedition and we can start to get the science into lessons and create lesson plan and resources off the back of it. And what do you hope that your the last the legacy of this trip will be for you and for your students? I just think that we're going to try and get as many students and teachers to change the way they teach or the, their view on learning. If we can change, you know, I, I'm probably going to see 10,000 students in a lifetime. If because of this expedition and me talking about it in lessons, getting them to do experiments that I've conducted on the ice and then look at the differences in the results, if I can get, I know of that 10,000 students that I teach, 5,000 to change the way they do something, to change their view on learning, to change what they want to do in life. You know, if, I, if their teacher, and students always think they're better than their teacher, if their teacher can go literally to the ends of the earth, then what can they do? It opens up everything for them. So, that's what this expedition is about, and that's what the legacy should be. Okay, and final question. Do you, feel, do you feel nervous about the trip? I think I've almost blocked that side of it out. Um, at the moment, it's all about fundraising, really. It, it, that, that's a very safe thing, although I was worried you know, we wouldn't get anyone turning up this evening to this talk. Um, I think the reality of the expedition itself hits home occasionally. We've just been to the Lake District. We were doing a bit of camp craft training up there, a bit of movement uh, with ice axes and crampons. We forgot our stoves for our first camp. If we'd done that in Antarctica, we'd all have been dead. Um, so it's things like that that occasionally bring home the reality of what we're going to face. I think that reality will kick in more often once we're out in Norway, which is where we're going in July, to do crevasse rescue training and to do uh, movement on ice, learning to cross-country ski while pulling sledges. I think at that point there is going to be a very large awakening and certainly if you're following the blog on teachingexpertise.com you will see a very big shift probably in my attitude towards the uh, expedition and my level of worry and my level of stress. Okay, thank you.